All right, we are back with our college basketball and NBA recap show. It's Connor and I. And here at the Carter Cast, we like to do charitable things. We're a charitable organization. And one time a year, we allow bronze sexuals to come on the show. Uh, it's a little, it's just us trying to give back to the community a little bit. We have Sam Pettycord on the show. Sam, how are you doing, man? Good, man. I'm just really excited to uh, hopefully defend my the greatest player of all time. So, hmm. all right. All right. Well, uh, if you guys never listened, this is a kind of a reunion of the Four Corners podcast minus one person. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah, mean, it, one, it was basically a triangle last time, anyway. Yeah. I don't think I don't think I don't think that person's alive anymore, to be honest. So who knows if we'll, we'll see him again? <laughs> All right, let's just talk about the NBA trade day, uh, deadline. Connor, we knew it was happening last week when we recorded. Yeah, we talked about Sham's article, Hardens to the Sixers. What's your thoughts on the trade? So my first reaction, as most people did, is like, oh, the Nets won, no doubt about it. But if you really look at it. The 76ers got the best they could for Ben Simmons. He wasn't playing. They kept Tyrese Maxey, kept Matisse Teibel, two young core pieces, and they got back James Harden, who's arguably top 15 player in the league. Hadn't been the best this year, but when he's playing well, he's top 15 in the league, top 10. For Ben Simmons, who wasn't even playing. Like, that is the best they could have done, in my opinion. I honestly think this might be one of the few trades that ends up as an actual, like, win-win. Because if the Sixers win now, Nets win now, like, I think they're both going to compete for the East this year. So it, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the few NBA trades that's, like, pretty much a win-win. You can't really argue either way. And, like, you said at first, like, everybody was like, oh, and that's, Nets win that trade no matter what. But, it, I mean, like, that's what I thought. I was like, there's no way they get any better than that for Simmons, for a guy who's literally hasn't contributed mm-hmm. to the team since last year. I mean. All right, let me go through the trade details. Philadelphia receives James Harden and Paul Millsap. Brooklyn receives Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, a 2022 first-round pick unprotected, and a 2027 first-round pick protected. Um, I think I like this trade for the Nets more still. I mean, you mentioned it, Connor, first glance. You're like, oh, the Nets yeah. won that trade. I think it is more of a win-win than people realize because yeah. people don't realize that Harden's just an attitude guy. Every time he has a bad attitude, that's when he starts playing bad. That's when we, we see his stats go down. Like the end of the Houston run, he was horrendous. He was literally eating his way out of Houston. And we saw the end of this Brooklyn run. It was terrible. He didn't want to be there. And he was never going to come back to Brooklyn anyways after the summer. So the Nets, I think, were more desperate to make this deal than the Sixers were, honestly. Because I think Daryl be Morey knew this was in his back pocket the whole time. I agree. And But if you're the Sixers, do you think that maybe you gave up a little too much? Because what if Harden leaves Brooklyn after this year, the offseason, like everybody thinks? You could have gotten him for basically for nothing. Mm-hmm. But you gave up you know, a couple of young pieces. It's not the worst thing in the world. Drummond has been a serviceable backup. It's not like losing him is not insanely bad. Seth Curry has been great, but start Paris Maxey, start James Harden. Like you got to give up something to get something. And they got back the most they could. Like I said, I think this is the first time Ben Simmons has been severely underrated in a trade. Exactly. But also you got to think too, is you're saying, you're saying like if James Harden, you should, if you're the Sixers, they should have waited until the summer to grab Harden. Maybe if a part of me thinks they gave up too much because if Harden was really dead set on going to Philly, What's another half season? So what? You but know? the thing is, you get a chance at the finals. You get one more shot. Like, why not do it? I yeah, really don't think they're giving up that much. Like, I think Seth Curry's a nice piece, but I think he's a nicer piece for the Nets than he is the Sixers. Yeah, I agree with that. And also, like, this is Joel Embiid's best year of his career. I, I think they're going to do all they can to try to capitalize on that, too. Yeah, and, jo- and Joel Embiid and James Harden. Joel Embiid's never played with a great point guard before. And James yeah. Harden's never played with a great big. The best big he played with was that weird Dwight Howard year. Or Capella, arguably. <laughs> yeah, probably. It was probably Clint Capella was his best big man. Now he's playing with an elite yeah. big man in Joel Embiid. I agree with what Sam just said, though, because Embiid's having an MVP year. You really can't trust it. Like, okay, let's say they wait till the offseason, then they sign Harden. What if Embiid gets hurt? What if he doesn't play as well? What if something happens, you know, somebody else goes down? I kind of agree with that because you got to go, you know, put your tips all in on the table and just go for it. Because one championship, I think we talked about it earlier, one championship is worth a few years of misery. Yeah, I, I mean, as a Hornets fan, Connor and I, you would take 20 years of misery for one title. Oh, yeah, no doubt. 20 years of 7-59 and 59 for one I, title. I honestly, God, I think I would. A thousand percent. The, yeah. There's no, no doubt in my mind. We've already dealt with it for 20 years and haven't gotten a title. Yeah, don't know if we uh, will either. Um. All right. I don't know if there's really much more to talk about that trade. I mean, 
Who do you think – I mean, as a team right now, I think I like the Nets more than the Sixers. I think it all depends on come playoff time if Kyrie can play full time, right? That and if Durant comes back healthy because he's been out for a few weeks now. He'll and be he's, dude, Durant return. It, he's yeah. going to be dirty. Like, did you all see him on the All Star pick thing tonight? <laughs> yeah, I watched that. It was That's hilarious. He was weird. He was like, it's like he didn't want to be there. Yeah, I thought yeah. LeBron was great on it. Yeah. LeBron was hilarious. He he's been, stirring, like, he does a good job, I think, on that. He was uh stirred it up. He was like, because KD was like asking to make trades with him for his team. He was like, damn KD, you're not done trading for the day yet, or something like that. <laughs> it was hilarious. And Charles Barkley was just not holding back at all. It was so funny. Huh. And nobody's talking about this. Patty Mills has never missed a three in his life. He had a rough game tonight. I was watching the Nets earlier. I didn't get to watch it. I was watching Duke finally. Uh, you, did, you didn't miss Clemson much. by 20. And then Wendell Moore almost getting murdered. Talk not, about, we went on a rant for dirty plays for like 10 minutes like on the last podcast. And then one by Clemson trumps all of them by a mile. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. You can't even like. Oh, we'll talk God. about we'll talk about that later. Um, anything yeah. else on the Harden trade? I mean, I feel like it was it's been in the works for a pretty long time now. It just felt like it was known. I just can't believe that. I mean, the stat was earlier today. It was like the big three in Brooklyn were 13 and three together. Like they spent a year and a half together and played 16 games. Like, okay, I got a question for y'all. Is that one of the biggest what ifs in NBA history? Like, no. I, I don't know. It, oh, I think 100% it is. Without Those a doubt. Are, I think, it, I mean, do you, okay, do you think that what if is bigger than if uh, when KD, Clay, and Steph went down in the finals against the Raptors? No, no because everybody knew, knew they would have won. But like they'd, exactly. ar- they'd already won a couple times. They'd already proven their dynasty. Well, the problem is with that Nets team. I said it to y'all. I don't know if it was to y'all or to whoever. When that team got together, I was like, "That first of all, that can't work because there's three ginormous egos." And yeah. it's not not from a basketball standpoint, they would never work. But it's from a mental, you know, team standpoint, they would never work. Like basketball yeah. talent wise, they win every year probably. They, I, I think they would have dominated the last playoffs. I don't think there's any debate. If yeah. Katie's shoe was a half size smaller, they would. It would things we totally would be. They would have. Katie would have have another title. And I'll give you another take. If Kyrie, like, if this vaccine mandate wasn't around and Kyrie was playing every single game this year, I don't think Harden would have left. I really don't. I think you. I, I think. He, I think he was always set. I think after last season, I think he was set on going. I think to if Philly. Kyrie. I think if Kyrie played this whole season so far, they would have at least waited until the off season. Harden would at least wait till the off season to give them another run because maybe they would have won a few more. The games. hilarious thing is, I think the van- vaccine mandate will be lifted. For them, I think it, I think they'll come up with some exception by playoff time. Without money, I mean, well, they can pay a fine to have him play. I'm and also, sure. they're they're lifting the indoor mask mandate too. Yeah, but so. all right, let's move on from that trade. Uh, the other trade that happened earlier in the week, uh, Sabonis to the Kings. The whole trade details are the Pacers trade Sabonis, Jeremy Lamb, Justin Holiday, and a 2023 second round pick to the Sacramento Kings for Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Hield, and Tristan Thompson. Who wins that trade? Sam, you want to go or you want me to go? You can go first. So my first reaction, like everybody else, was holy shit, the, you know, the Kings got fleeced. The Kings, I was be- like, what? we're doing a Kings thing. I was like, what are they doing? And then I like, just kind of sat down and thought about it. And I was like, you know, so bonus is 25, two-time all-star, double-double machine. Halliburton's played, what, a year and a half? And he's good, has potential. But so bonus is a proven all-star. He's only, what, three years older than him, four years older than him? I'm not like that mad at the Kings for doing what they did. They decided to roll with De'Aaron Fox. It was always going to be one or the other. I don't think they could coexist together forever. And they got an all-star back. They got a proven all-star back. So I, I don't think I don't think the Kings necessarily lost the trade. You know, Sam, what do you think? I mean, I'm kind of. I guess I'm kind of on the same board. Like they, you can't have De'Aaron Fox and Halliburton on the same team for however long. And like you said, they got a proven all-star back. I mean, it's not a trade that'll like you know shock the world but like i mean they did what they sh- probably should have done i mean if the offer is there you got to take that if you're the kings i i still think the kings were dumb here i don't think they needed to give up buddy Hield in this trade i think there was a separate trade for buddy Hield to go into probably but he's been on the outs for a while he, there's been rumors around him for the last year and a half two years and if, if you watch any kings games which i only watch it when they play the lakers buddy shoots it every he does not care he's he, I don't think he played as very much team okay, basketball. Okay, but if you're the Lakers, why not throw two or three 20, 28, 20, 29 first-round picks? Yeah, I know. 
and they Westbrook, would, the Kings wouldn't take that. If you if they threw three first round picks for Buddy Hield, ten, ten years down the line though, I still unprotected. Those are beautiful, unprotected from That's the true. LeBron. LeBron probably be gone by once those. LeBron retires. We're gonna see another seven years of Robert Sacre back. Horrible. LeBron might be out of there next year. Did you see that clip of like Russell Westbrook trying to talk up LeBron and AD on the bench? And they Russell just were not having it. Dodge or something. That shit was hilarious. I cannot believe. Like I can't believe they didn't do anything. But also, I'm not the biggest Halliburton guy. I'm not either. I think I'm people overhype him. Like, they think he's going to be the next, like, fucking, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, if you would have saw Twitter when that trade happened, you would have thought they traded Chris Paul. Yeah. Exactly. Because he's he has potential, yes. He probably will be, like, a damn good player, maybe an all-star. But you don't know. He's, he's like a- he's like DeJounte Murray for me. Like, I never watch him, and everybody talks about how good he is. And I'm like, I don't really, like, I see it, but I don't. Is he Tyreek Evans for the Kings? Did they move on from him? PTSD? No. Um, I don't think you can get a more boring Spursy backcourt than Malcolm Brogdon and Tyrese Halliburton. I mean, How weird to boring is that? The thing I mean, is, let's I... just add Kyle Anderson at the three and let's have a party. McDaniel's at the let's four. Let's read books. <laughs> I just didn't think. think that's so accurate. I don't know how you think of that stuff. I thought the Pacers were going to have a full on fire sale, and they really like they traded Levert away and Sabonis. They kept Miles Turner, kept Brogdon, got Halliburton in return. Like they they did a pretty good, decent job, I think. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of a win win. Like I just don't I think mean, it matters that much. Like Sam said, I, yeah. like it's not going to shock the world or anything. I just, like, when the trade happened, I'm like, oh, that's cool, but it really does not matter in the grand scheme of things. I feel like it picked up a lot of heat just because it was the first, like, pretty big trade that happened on the deadline. Yeah, like, exactly. Before, everybody's Bobby freaking out about it. And then what actually happened. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about the Porzingis trade. Chris Stapp's Porzingis goes to the Wizards, and I think a second-round pick, and the Mavericks get Spencer Dinwiddie, Mark Cuban's best bud, apparently, and Davis Bertans. Uh, I mean – I don't know what to think of this trade. I think this is hot, another one that's just like, who cares? Hot take, Bertans will be the best player to come out of that trade. Absolutely. Por, Porzingis, I, his career, Porzingis' career going to Washington to die. Didn't Woody inconsistent. He's not going to do anything for the Mavs. Davis Bertans will be the best player from that trade. Davis Bertans just goes on that hot streak he did right before he got his max contract. Yep. He's making a shit. Every NBA player does. I mean, he. I think he's the. Per, I think he's a great player to pair up with Luca. Could you imagine that? The Mavs going after another foreign white tall player? No way. They would never do that. Freaking. Okay. Well, like, that's the problem. Like, okay, think about those old Harden teams. We've talked about this a million times. Luka is just like those old Harden teams where it was Harden and everybody stand around the corner. But yeah. I think it's just a worse version of that because I don't think Luka's as good as Harden was in those years. I agree, but I'd, I would argue that well, actually, I don't know. I was going to say the supporting cast. I feel like Lucas' supporting cast is better defenders than Harden's was. Uh, Finney, Smith, Finney Smith, great defender. Reggie Bullock, pretty solid perimeter defense. Like, I, bro, I don't you know. know. Like, I feel like it's pretty interchangeable. Back in those days, like, they were a good defensive team, I thought. Like, they weren't good defense. They didn't play good defense, but they were had. I think Ariza, yeah. P.J. Tucker played out of his Tucker. mind in those teams. Yes, bro. Yeah. And Trevor Ariza wasn't useless like he is now. Mm-hmm. I just feel like the Mavs are one of those teams that they might win the first round series, but they're never going past that. They're stuck in that jazz place. They are. I don't I don't know. Luke can't do it by himself. Because right now, all you have to do is stop him. I don't think Luke is as good as everybody makes him out to be also, but that's another Well, he had, he had 51 tonight, so. I'm not saying he's not good at basketball. It's yeah. Not, he's not the next damn goat like everybody actually. No. Yeah. Eh? Bro, no, relax. I don't know if he – I, I mean, think he's just in the wrong system right now. It's so he's early. White but... system. Where's he gonna go to do better than he is now? I think he can. I think I'm not talking about stat wise. Stat wise, he's probably in the best place possible. But I think win- winning wise, I I think he's in the wrong. Oh, place. Yeah, I was mean stat wise. I mean, it's but... hard for me to see him paired with another superstar though. Like, can you imagine that? Like somebody really, really good playing with Luca. How would that work? That's what I'm saying. You could. I mean, you could say the same thing about James Harden right now. I, that's the point though. Harden's not as good as everybody makes him out to be either. I don't think. I think this is and I think this will tell I mean we'll finally know if Harden can play with another superstar. If Harden can't win in, if Harden can't win in Philly or at least get to the finals or something like that, then he's just not the guy and it's just not gonna happen. Because he's had consistently superstars around him. And also years. you gotta remember Luca is so young. Yeah. 
Yeah. And Harden's what, 31? Is Harden 31 like 32? I don't know. He's 33. older than 30, bro. He's like 32, 33. Yeah. yeah. He's because he was in that I'm going 32. He was in the 2009 draft. Yeah. So he's probably 33. He is turning 33 this year. Yeah. 32, okay. Yeah. Wow. Question. Sorry. Wow. Sorry. Yeah. He was in the 09 draft. He's, um, not, he's not as old as LeBron, though. He's not as old as LeBron. So doesn't matter. All right. Seven and seven. We'll talk about LeBron later. Uh, let's talk about the Hornets trade. Montrez Harold to the Hornets for Ish Smith and Vernon Carey. Uh, easy win for the Hornets. I love it. And if you're on Twitter bitching right now about, oh, he's shorter than Plumley, he's shorter than PJ Washington, he has no defense. Shut the fuck up. We gave up Ish Smith and Vernon Carey. Like, are you kidding me? Vernon Carey hasn't seen the court this entire year. Ish Smith has played, what, 10 minutes a game over like 20 games, and his plus minus is in the fucking gutter. We gave up nothing to get six man a year two years ago, averaging 16 and seven this year. Give me a break. And I think also, it's great. Also, every Hornets fan, they're looking at the buyout market. Kemba Walker coming in as a backup. I don't ha- – I saw that. It, is he at the point in his career – let me ask you all this. Is he at the point in his career where he would sign with Charlotte just because he loves Charlotte for like a very small amount of money? Is he already well, at that if, point in his career? If he's in the buyout market, he has to. If they, like, if the, you, if, you think it would be like a rest of the year – If the Knicks buy him out, deal? then he gets like one of those o- Odell Beckham contracts where it's like seven hundred grand. So you think it would be like a rest of the year deal and that's it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, well – he probably would then. Maybe the, the Marcus Cousins or, you know, whoever. Yeah, exactly. You see like one of those Cousins deals. every year. Yeah. I mean, but no, I love the Montrez Harrell trade. It's exactly, I mean, it's not like what we wanted. They put it out the report today that we were going to trade a first round, Kai Jones and PJ Washington for Jakob Pertl. That's an Way too awful much. trade. That's an <laughs> Way awful too trade. Uh, Jakob Pertl is like, a, like an upgraded plumber. Oh, you, you, you're been. saying that was an awful trade too, right, yeah. Sam? Yeah. Horrendous trade. I mean, like that, you traded a first for Kai Jones. Yeah, exactly. And you, you can't give up on him that quickly. Vernon Carey, perfect time to move on. If they traded Nick Richards, I wouldn't even be that mad. Is but Kai, jo- Kai, is Kai Jones going to become the equivalent of Jackson Hayes? Yeah. <laughs> That's I just gross. <laughs> That's just gross. Not talking off the court. I'm talking on the court. <laughs> I mean, I can see it. High flyer who's a little out of control. He, Kai Jones just looks like he just picked up a basketball last year, though. <laughs> he, when, yeah, in the draft, they're like, he, is, he has the potential he can shoot threes, but he is raw. He's, he's very raw. Yeah. But, no, I love the Montrose Herald trade. The Hornets need a kick in the butt, too, and he's an attitude guy that we need. He is. Because Mason Plumlee's not getting that done. He's one of those players that, you know, if, if you go down 15 points – He's not going to be like, oh, well, shit, like the game's over and hang his head. Like, he's going to try to get back into it. And I feel like a lot of our team now is just like, all right, on to the next one. Okay, let's move on to the C.J. McCollum trade that happened earlier this week. McCollum for basically Josh Hart to the Pelicans – or Josh Hart to the Blazers and McCollum to the Pelicans. Um, This is another, like, okay, this doesn't really change anything. It's two bottom-tier West teams trading mid-tier – players McCollum's oh. fallen off a crazy amount in the last two years yeah what what is McCollum anymore he's not a number two guy I I'll don't think that. he's I don't... a three man a if three you're... yeah he's a averaging three. 20 he's averaging 20 points this year a three on a title team now on a title contender team if Lakers, you're top if you're number three yes yeah if CJ McCollum was the Lakers number three instead of Westbrook yeah Oh my gosh. Are you saying he's I'm I think CJ McCollum's more on the level of Seth Curry. CJ McCollum uh, oh Anthony, bro. I think CJ McCollum can create his own shot a little better than Seth Curry can. I don't hate that, but I think Seth Curry's a better shooter. <sighs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. You guess? I don't even like the Curries, but like that's not even close. Seth Curry's the best three point shooter in NBA history. You're right, damn. How can I forget? But, yeah, I don't – like, I mean, is there anything to talk about with that trade, really? Like, the Pelicans, I guess they're going for a play-in spot. And I just don't think they're going to go anywhere. Zion's I mean, Brandon, pretty- <laughs> yeah, Zion's had another snack while he was watching CJ get traded. Those, he's got he's to redo those Mountain Dew commercials because it does not look good. 
he looks 500 pounds in this. <laughs> like, I don't know what they were thinking. They're like, hey, Zion, dude, like, let's get you in a – we'll do some Photoshop or something, dude. Like, yeah. I, if I was his agent, I'd be livid. That meme yeah. of him walking out of the interview with, like, the construction outfit on is like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Get Zion to Charlotte or New York. Hurry. Hurry. New Orleans is a death sentence. Speaking of death sentences – my sweet, sweet Marvin Bagley ended up in Detroit today. Don't know how his dad feels about that. I don't care what his dad feels about that. How does I, Why not the Hornets get involved in that? Gave up like his, nothing. His career is going to Detroit to, to die. Him I'm and sorry. Chris Stapps are just falling off the face of the earth. Yeah, fall from grace. And who else was involved in that trade? Abaka to the – Abaka went to the Bucks. That, that's a sneaky nice trade. Yeah, he could he could contribute well for them. Sam's boy Josh Jackson got traded. Sam's favorite player. To who? He was in that trade. I think he went to oh, in four, that one. I think Josh Jackson was in that four team deal. I think he went to the Clippers. I think. And Divincenzo has gone to. Yeah. The worst player. That that's a, like a prime like bunch of mid tier like player trade. Like that's just like okay. Every franchise is like oh we got this guy. And yeah. it makes no difference. No, yeah. it doesn't at all. Because that's the thing with this trade deadline today. It was a lot of noise. And you're like, holy crap, this name, this name, this name. And then when you like sit back and look at it as we're doing right now, not mm-hmm. that much change, really. Yeah. No, a lot of players, it'll be the same situation. Oh, here's no, t- no title five. odds really changed that much besides Philly. I think Philly's title odds changed about like 200 on the books. Yeah. But even like the Nets changed like. 20 like it went from 400 yeah. to plus 420 barely even like the sabonis trade like that Nothing. doesn't really shake the league at all and no that's probably not at the all. next that's Derek, probably the next highest like tier trade Derek white traded for josh richardson that does nothing no it doesn't because dennis schroeder dennis schroeder got traded from boston they picked up Derek white like that's an upgrade but like is boston going to do anything in the playoffs no but they're above the hornets right now and honestly i think that's enough of the trade deadline there's not really much else right yeah, I think that's probably about it. Oh, we can let's talk about the Lakers moves. Oh, shit. Mm. Sorry. Um, we'll get it. We'll do a Lakers minute in a second. We got to talk about how bad the Hornets have been. What okay. is wrong with the Hornets? And does James Borrego need to be fired? Um, okay, I'll say this. I've been on this wave all year. If Borrego doesn't lead them to the actual playoffs, not the fucking playing tournament, if we don't win the playing tournament game and get to the playoffs, I think he's got to be gone. I think he has to be. Because, yeah, you can say you can argue the rebuilds ahead of schedule, sure. But with the, te- with the team he's got right now, LaMelo All-Star, Miles Bridges, Borderline All-Star, you have to at least be the 7 or 8 seed in the playoffs. You have to. Sam, as a Laker fan, what do you think? About the Hornets? Yeah, do you think Borrego should be fired? Hey, they're my secondary team, but yes. Okay, I had this conversation with a dude on my team the other day. He was He's a Hornets guy. And he was like, dude, I love Borrego. And I was like, why? And he was like, well, he's just – I think he's great at developing players. And I said, yeah. But you have two budding all stars. You should not be in the East. You should not be where you are. Like that's just not. I agree. And you can be player development all you want to. That's great. If you can't translate that player development into results or wins, it doesn't matter. You're yeah. just. Tr- it doesn't matter at all. Hundred percent. That's li- what you said. Literally is what I conversation I have with the kid. I, I might have been today. I was actually probably today, today or yeah. yesterday. Exactly. And we. I make this analogy constantly. We did it with like the, the – we started off with the Bengals, actually. I made the comparison that Zach Taylor is probably not the guy to take the Bengals to the Super Bowl, and then yeah, that, 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 that backfired on poorly. me. Yeah. But, like, it's the, it's the Warriors comparison. Mark Jackson was never taking that team to the finals. Steve Kerr yep. came in and did it. The Hornets have got to find that guy. I just don't think Borrego's that guy. I think we're going to see Borrego go to these, like, teams that are rebuilding. He's going to build them back up and then have He's to a, leave and go do another rebuild. He's a classic magic coach. Yeah, he's – I mean, there's Steve not much Clifford. difference between him and, like, Steve Clifford, yeah. Like, I was thinking Steve Clifford. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Like, and then, obviously, I mean, we saw even uh, uh, Crown Club. They were like, yeah, no, uh, we're a little out on Borrego right now. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. I could not believe that. That's been the biggest Borrego train supporters in freaking league history. All right, two things. One, if that Crown Club ever listens to this podcast, just know I've had you blocked my entire life, and I don't know why, but every time I read one of your tweets that they DM me, I understand why I blocked you. <laughs> two, James Borrego getting any credit for LaMelo's player development is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. He was telling – my friend was telling me, like, 
I mean, look at LaMelo. He's so young. I'm like, dude, that dude was born to be like a superstar. I don't yeah. care. Mike Brown coached him. Like, I agree with that. But I don't think you should show LaMelo. I think it's Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges is what J- people should be looking at James Borrego. Miles Bridges was one of those guys like Kai Jones, super raw talent, couldn't put it together. And now he is a borderline all star. Carter, you were all in on trading Miles Bridges, getting rid of I, I didn't like Miles Bridges. I didn't think he was a good enough player. I really didn't. And I was completely proven wrong. Good old Miles. I'll yeah. put it. Yeah. But let's, that's, that's the fair. thing. Like James Borrego developed Miles Bridges very, 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 very well. Yeah. Even PJ Washington's development, I, I think it's halted a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I think PJ can only go so far. I agree. I agree with that statement. But, okay, as the Hornets right now, or we're getting smoked right now. We're losing every game. For some reason, we're favored in some of these games. The Bulls were only, like, minus two against us, which is mind-boggling. The yeah. Raptors were a pick em. The Raptors are a crimp tonight, as we all know. Yeah. I, the Hornets are on an A-game losing streak right now. It just seems like every team we play against. And the other teams that we're going against that we need to get into the playoffs against, like the Raptors and Celtics, are both on seven-game winning streaks. And we're losing these big games for the standings. We lost against the Raptors, lost against the Celtics again. Like, these games are going to matter come April. All of a sudden, it's a two, three-game, you know, toss-up, whatever. It might be tied in the standings, and we do not own the tiebreaker. So, we're going to no, get screwed. We're going to get screwed, at least one of those. We, I mean, and like we mentioned this on the last one. We need the all-star break so, so, so bad. We, we saw four games till the break. Yeah, and and, and we, we could lose all we could lose all four. As a as a Hornets fan, what's like what would what do you want from like the team? Like, do you want like a, just a playoff berth and then build off of that next year, or do you want like a playoff series win? Like, oh, just get into the playoffs, not the play in. I think the play in is a baseline, no matter what. We don't make the play in out immediately. We got to figure some stuff out. If we don't get into the real playoffs, he's out. I agree. No matter what, we, we should make the playoffs. the playoffs. We should have been not in the playoffs gonna, last we're year. We're not going to win as a seven or eight seed. No. Well, we here's the thing. I we think we could steal. We could steal a couple games. We're one of those teams that I don't think the Hornets will get swept in the playoff series. I oh, really we'll be don't. four and two, and we'll scare a team, but I don't think we'll win one. Here's the thing, though. Are you getting PTSD from last year? Hayward goes down about this time last year with the same mysterious injury. Do we see him again this year? I don't think so. People are saying, "Oh yeah, we'll see him back." I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. It's the I same mean, thing as last year. It's getting to the point with Hayward. And when we all knew it when he got signed, and he's honestly been a surprise because I was livid when we signed him. I thought that was a terrible deal. He's been gave, decent when he's played. We gave him $20 million more than the Pacers even offered. And he's been good when he's played, but the problem is when he's played, you have to put that in there. Yeah. He gets hurt at the most inopportune times. And so it's – and he's not playing in the biggest games. Yeah. It's just, I mean, you almost have to cut loose with them and yeah, so, try and, and also Charlotte obviously is a, a free agent destination place. You know, it's not LA, it's not Miami, it's not New York. Lamelo but, changed a little bit though. But Lamelo has changed that completely. I feel like. Yeah, I, I think Charlotte's only up and coming on like free agent destinations. Like, hey, I go here, have fun, play. Yeah. Like the way the way a the lot of people play. want to play with Lamelo. A lot of people want to play. Exactly. With obviously, we're not getting the Kevin Durant and guys like that. But there's no reason we couldn't be in the runnings for guys on the Bradley Beer, Bradley Beal tier. Yeah, I agree. But anything else on the Hornets? Um, no, I just I think the breaks would be much needed. Hopefully, Montrezl Harrell gives a little boost. A game losing streak right now, looking pretty shitty. Not gonna lie, but we're back to 500. Charlotte, so Charlotte Sports is in a crisis. We've been here before. We've been here before. 500. We've been here before. <laughs> hey, like we never left. Doomed to mediocrity. Doomed to mediocrity. Charlotte Sports. That, that 2015 Panthers year never happened. No. No. What are you talking about? All right. Let's get into a Lakers minute. Um, Sam, we every week we talk about Lakers. Lakers suck. Lakers are wrong. They look like an, a crappy coached AAU team. Russell Westbrook, all this. I'll just, I'll just let you talk about the Lakers. Well, this is why we have you on. I watch essentially every Lakers game. Um, stay up late at night, perform some of my, my 8 a.m. class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's really rough. Um, you know, I think the right way to put it, I think, is that, well, A, there's just not the right pieces around LeBron and AD. Uh, Russell Westbrook is not the, I don't think, the main problem. I think yeah. last year the same issues were there. Even with LeBron and AD hurt, that team was not making the finals. 
Like they, if they made it to the, if they, if they would have got destroyed by Phoenix, or yeah. not, by, not by Phoenix, they got destroyed by Phoenix, and that that series was a lot more blown out than it it looked a little closer than it was. Regardless, yeah. the issues are there before Westbrook got here, and healthy or not, LeBron or LeBron and the D are not going that far that year. I, Coming into I have a question. What? I have a question for you real quick. So you mentioned the off season. Do you think this past all season was reminiscent of the one two years ago when they signed Marc Gasol and Montrez Harrell and all yes, these big the name thing. players? It's really the like, same thing. It's, it's the same thing. And like that, like I used to get mad at like you know I would get pissed at KCP or I'm mad at Kuzma for this and that. And looking back, I'm like, damn, like those are some it, damn good role players that like we mm-hmm. don't have. Like literally, it, you get the ball kicked and like I I want, I want Austin Reeves to shoot and that's like not good. Like yeah, good, but I mean, I, that's not the guy I hope LeBron kicks out to. I mean, I yeah, I don't understand how frustrating is watching Trevor Reza play basketball at the age he is. It's unbelievable. I, I just don't understand how the Lakers continually make the mistake because it happened with Marcus All, and then they did it again this year with Dwight Howard and DeAndre Jordan signed these centers, these big name centers, and they don't play them. They are unplayable after ten games in the year every single year. They, DeAndre they, Jordan they and Dwight Howard are both unplayable. They don't they won't play, play in the playoffs. playoffs. Exactly. Javon McGee started every game of that championship season, and he did not touch the floor in the playoffs. Like it always comes down to AD starting at the five. So I will never understand why they continually sign these big seven foot centers who can't shoot, and they will not play them. Well, because AD has more power than anybody else besides LeBron, and they're going to do what he wants. Like that's yeah. their. I mean, and plus another thing is too, like obviously they're old, obviously, and I'm pretty sure they're the oldest team in the league, and yeah. they. It, they say it all the time, but like they are the laziest team I think I've ever watched. Like, yeah, it's unbelievable. Because I think I've watched last year was the first year I ever took off, but like I've probably watched every LeBron game mostly for the past like five years. And like, this is the laziest one I've, it, it's not even close. It's not, even you close. can't, you can't really blame. Sorry, well, those Cleveland LeBron teams did not play defense, and that those teams would destroy this team on defense, and it's not even close. You can't even blame LeBron for being lazy sometimes. I'm not even a huge LeBron fan, but if you're his age and you've done what he's done, and then all of a sudden like you, you just keep losing games over and over again, I'd be pissed off too. I wouldn't run back on defense every possession on a, when, on a Wednesday night game against the Blazers. But that's like, not the Mamba mentality. Well, you know. <sighs> Kobe's ninth all-time. Yeah, Kobe's barely squeaking in the top 10. Barely. Hot take. Okay, okay, but let's talk about LeBron for a second. We saw all the reports that came out saying Frank Vogel, it was about to be the scapegoat, LeBron's classic, oh, let's get rid of the coach, let's bring in another one of my guys. And then what, what do you have to say about Frank Vogel almost trying to get fired? They tried, literally tried to k- kick him out. I have no comment on Frank Vogel. Honestly, with LeBron teams, I really don't care who the coach is most of the time. It's it so irrelevant. Like It doesn't matter. LeBron's running the entire shit. And the thing that I think made Ty Lu work with LeBron so well is that that was LeBron's dude, and he let LeBron probably have more power than he does now with Vogel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they won a lot of games and went to – LeBron and Ty Lue never missed a finals together. Like they, The thing is, it, it seems like – LeBron handpicked the roster this year, and they suck. I wouldn't say he handpicked. I think he handpicked for Westbrook. I don't think he handpicked. Uh, I feel like I feel like certain guys, Ariza, Dwight Howard, Wayne Ellington. I feel like those guys he brought in himself. No way. And I, I feel like I feel like he didn't really anticipate Malik Monk. Okay, coming in. he's but, been the let's one. Let's talk about spot. Westbrook. He clearly hand handpicked Westbrook. I said he I said he handpicked Westbrook. I, I know think, that's the thing. I think that was stupid. I don't know why he did that. I know that's his boy, but like. And we saw today the Lakers tried to do do Westbrook for John Wall trade, and the Rockets said no. I mean, it was the right. I mean, the right decision. I don't think John Wall would. John Wall wouldn't have been any better than Westbrook, though. Same thing. Would any team take Westbrook for free right now? I don't think so. I really don't. With that cap number, literally got to go back to like OKC and just retire there. Like, I'm not even joking. Me and Carter were on it from the very beginning of the year. We were like, we thought the Westbrook move was a good move solely based on the fact that LeBron and AD could load manage and Westbrook could carry them through the regular season. And it's just not been that at all. I don't know what's – it's mental. It's There's a mental block with him. Like, athletes you, that good can't play that bad without it being mental. It's just – Okay, we, think me- it's the, we mentioned the right. this before, Connor. The thing is – I still like the Lakers over a lot of these first-round West Conference teams. Oh, me too. 
I, I mean, we talked about it before. I'm sure you listened to the last episode, but I like the, I love the Lakers going against the Jazz in the first round. I like the Lakers going against the Mavericks in the first round. The Nuggets, I'm a little 50 50 on because that's how much I like Jokic. But then I, the Grizzlies would be a seven game series, and I think the Grizzlies might win. That's how good they are right now. It's just hard. I'm not even, like I said, I'm not going to sit here and just be a huge LeBron fan, but it's hard to beat LeBron four to seven times in the playoffs. That's my that's my whole thing is that I'm not super worried unless they keep losing stupid games and we don't get to even a play-in spot because it's yeah. getting to that point. I mean, Lakers are ninth or tenth right now. Granted, they're also like three and a half games out of like fifth. So like, yeah, you know, that's but, how the standings are in both conferences right now. So like, I'm not super, and people don't even mention the Lakers and they're talking about you know contending teams. And I'm like, dude, if your team has to play LeBron and AD healthy. I don't care the other three people around them. Do you have you're gonna have a very hard time winning that series? You me can't. and Carter, were, me and Carter were talking about. Imagine being like one of those teams, and you're like, oh, like yes, like we played so good during the regular season, got the two or three seed. All of a sudden, first round, you're playing LeBron, AD, and the Lakers. Like that's gotta be that's gotta suck. And LeBron, I'm telling you, if LeBron and AD are healthy, they get to the conference finals. I'm not. There's no way a team and with dude, uh, conference finals is a little much. They're not going getting past the Warriors or the Suns. Bro, I hope you realize if they play the Suns, they're going to win that series. And I hope you realize LeBron's probably going to average like 37, 10, and 12. But can he turn it on? Can he turn it on? I mean, we saw those years back in Cleveland. The regular season was kind of coasting a little bit. And then the end of the year, going into the first round of the playoffs, he would turn it back on. And everyone would be like, why isn't LeBron MVP? Even though he would only he only played seriously in the regular season the last bit and the early part of the playoffs. So everybody's looking at recency bias. But can he turn it on at this age? Where yeah. all of a sudden in the playoffs, he has to go full on 40, 15, and 10 mode. He literally did it two years ago. Last year, he literally wasn't healthy. He came back, you know, too early to play. I mean, yeah. not too early, but he came back soon because he had to play. I mean, he played. But have we seen it good. all this year? We haven't seen it in two years. Is that That's my concern, and he's getting up in age. I'm not worried about it. That dude, it doesn't matter. The age thing doesn't matter. Like, if you – if you, he's by and, by, by and far, he can outplay anybody in the NBA whenever he feels like it. That's the thing. If he goes and plays against – whoever he plays against, he will probably outplay them if he wants to. And if you think I don't he, think he can outplay Giannis. He wasn't even trying the other night. I have, a, I have a take on this. I think that's still true to a certain extent. I think LeBron now is much more likely to, like, give up and take his foot off the gas if they're down 15 at the start of the fourth than he used to be. Yeah, but not in the more, playoffs. I, I still think he might just be that, screw it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. not no way. He, bro, okay, also, I do see you blame from, Space he, Jam 2. Do you blame Space Jam 2 on this? Is that a serious question? Yes. It's cursed. No, Stephen A. And also, you just made me lose my train of thought. Well, In, Space Jam. And then everyone's talking about Taylor Horton Tucker, all this. I mean, I think conference finals is a stretch for this Lakers team. No, not at all. It's just a bunch of weird pieces that just don't fit together. I don't know what it is. Dude, if you think LeBron, Jeff Green, Kevin Love, Jordan Clarkson, and Jose But we're talking about a different LeBron. No, we're not. I promise you we're not. We are talking about a much different LeBron. And a much different, a much different Western Conference as well. It's not a much different LeBron. He just played point guard that year. He had to play center most of this year. That's why you're saying you're seeing a different LeBron. The effort level still is this exact same. He doesn't do anything except try to score, and then the passes when are there when they're there. I think we see a much different LeBron than we did in the one you're talking about. And also, I mean, I know this is recency bias too, and I'm sure I'll eat my words on this one, but I don't see the Lakers getting past the Grizzlies. Yes. See, I might have to disagree with you on that. The Grizzlies are are amazing this year. Wait, they match up very well. If they are, if the Grizzlies are healthy, they match up very well. Yes, but you also got to realize John Morant's going for under twenty points at least twice in a series against the Lakers because that's the playoffs. They hone. They literally do everything they can to hone in on their their. John Morant's going to get shut down a couple games at least a couple games. Like they. Really? The one thing that the one thing this that gets is a me, different John Moran. The one thing that gets me in that series, though, like that potential series, 
it's the Grizzlies' lack of experience. If it comes down to a close game in the last couple minutes, are they going to know what to do in those high pressure situations? Is Jaron Jackson going to be able to hit that corner three? Is Zaire Williams, the rookie, going to be able to hit that corner three to take the game, take the lead in the last two minutes? I think John Morant's that good where he, where they will figure it out. Really, this not year? This yeah, I, I, I mean, I would not be shocked if I saw this team in the conference finals. No, I think I would. I think the Grizzlies could win a first round series, but I can't. I can't. I can't who are, see who are they losing to? Suns, Warriors, both those teams. I think they would lose to the Warriors, but I think they would give the Suns a good series. I, I just don't know why that Suns looks so good this year. They match up so well against so many teams. The with Jaron Jackson, Desmond Bain, John Morant. Yeah. Dylan Brooks but, coming back. Tyus Jones has been great off the bench. They have a good bench, I will say. They have like a couple of no names on the bench that like are not household names at all. Brandon Clark, Conchar, whatever. They have a good bench. Speaking of the Warriors, they're down three to the Knicks right now. The Knicks are a poverty franchise anyway. Three minutes left. Julius Randle almost has a triple double. Jeez. Al Curry's five for fifteen from three. He has not been back at all. No, he hasn't. If he if he doesn't shoot well in the playoffs, they might be done too. Bro, he never shoots well in the playoffs. I don't know what it is. It's bro, it's the same thing that I'm saying about John Morant. They literally you, all your focus goes towards that yeah. their guy. Like look, I'm telling you, literally, like that's why you don't see the ungodly number because everybody's like, oh, it's the playoffs. They're going to go off. Like, that never actually happens. They end up averaging the same thing they normally yeah. do if they have one blowout game. Like, LeBron is only the human exception. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, Jokic still played the same in the playoffs. Yo, I know. I'm saying they all play the same. They don't get No, better. I'm saying I, I think Jokic was even better in the playoffs. He was I, incredible. I told you I did not watch last year. <laughs> he was incredible. And, and, I don't know. And if the Nuggets are healthy, like, I could see them beating the Lakers, too. But, I mean, I guess we're literally debating hairs here. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just really just like a wait and see what happens the rest of the year. Because the Lakers really keep screwing around. Like, they're going to find themselves in, like, a horrible situation. Um, After all the trades and stuff, do we see any different contenders this year? Like, or a- after the trade deadline? As, I mean, I guess the Sixers are a real contender now. Because I didn't see them as a real contender before. I didn't either, and I think the Harden trade obviously like boosts them up to the top of the contender list. But still, I need to see Harden and Embiid play together in a pretty decent sample size before I'm ready to say they're the favorites. I think I think it's going to be an immediate thing. You think so? I think they're going to gel immediately together. I just don't maybe because Harden is a pretty willing passer. We see Harden like remember when Harden finally left Houston. And got mm-hmm. his way to go to Brooklyn. Literally, the first week in Brooklyn, he's playing out of his mind. That's true. Hey, how about this? Do Embiid and Harden average fifty free throws a game combined? With the NBA calling free throws again, I mean, yeah, they might average forty-five free throws a game between the two of them. Is Tobias Harris in a better situation now? I would argue yes. I would think so too. I feel like we might see a little resurgence of Tobias Harris. As I can't man. believe because he has been awful. I can't believe they kept him. I can't believe they kept him. They Nobody must would not, take that. Him and Westbrook might say, be the worst contracts in the NBA right now. The whole the all NBA worst contracts team. <laughs> that's for a, that's a summer podcast. It all is. right, I think that's it for the NBA. Um, finally, getting into All Star uh, All Star break. Oh, like we mentioned before, we knew it was going to happen. The Draymond Green KD replacements, DeJounte Murray and LaMelo Ball. I think it's well-deserved. I will say people are bitching about LaMelo getting in. I think he should have been in anyways. I think he should have been in over Van Fleet. Because people are saying, oh, Jared Allen got robbed or Jalen Brown got robbed. Give me a break. I would take both Jared Allen and Jalen Brown over Chris Middleton this year. But LaMelo getting in should not be like a shock to anybody. Absolutely not. And he's going to be the perfect all-star game player. We're going to see were, at least two ridiculous plays in that All-Star game just because of LaMelo. The Hornets were the only team in the top ten in the East that did not have a representative before he got selected. And people but, are saying, oh, the Celtics need to, the Cavs need to. No, And he still got that pity invite, that stupid injury replacement. Yeah, I think DeJounte Murray, I was on him. I said uh, he was a pretty big snub and he got in, so I like that. Because they gave the Draymond Green thing. But all right, let's move on to college basketball. We had our big preview for Duke Carolina last week. You were at the game at the 
Uh, let me take my victory lap real quick. I was dead right on everything on that game. I've, on the big Duke games this year, I have been dead right on everything. I can't argue that. You have. I can't, I can't even sit here and say you're not. I mean, and the thing with Carolina is, usually Carolina games, you know, or Carolina Duke games, you can always find excuses somewhere. It's like, oh, there's bad calls. Oh, you know, that was a block. Oh, that was a charge. Uh, he should have gotten a foul here. Blah, 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 blah. No excuses from Carolina. Duke dominated them every aspect of the game. Hubert Davis has to take blame in that post-game press conference for not putting Leaky Black on Paula Bancara before the start. Like, idiot dudes like us were saying that before the game. It's like, you have to put Leaky on Bancara. If you put Manic or Baycott, it's going to cause problems immediately. And we saw that, and that was the game right there in the first five minutes. By the under-16 timeout, it was game. Let me just say, I, re- I really thought it would be competitive. I really did. In my heart, I was like, this is going to be a game. Waited in line all day. Got out there at 8 a.m. Got third row in the risers, whatever. It was over in the under 16. It was over. I don't know why. I don't know what it was. Bancaro and Theo John were both riled up in the student section the whole time because everybody was chanting DUI and shaking their keys at Bancaro. I think that just fired him up more. A.J. Griffin turned into prime D. Wade. I couldn't believe it. Bancaro didn't even play well after the first eight minutes. No, he didn't. No, he did not. He barely did anything. A.J. Griffin took over. It was literally whoever offense told Brady Manning. Every yep. possession. But the thing is, Brady, Man- ironically, Brady Manick kept y'all in the game. Yep, exactly. He was our only offense. And so you we couldn't, couldn't take afford him to take him off. Exactly, exactly. And that game's on Caleb. Look, a big chunk of that game is on Caleb Love. Every time you guys finally got momentum, he would dribble off his foot. He would make a dumb yep. pass. He would brick a wide, wide open three. I think what that- it was, his, fr- his freshman year, there was so little pressure on him to perform well in those games. He was like, screw it, here we go. This year, everybody was like always about to kill Duke. Like he always goes off against Duke. Like all the pressure, couldn't handle it. Go ahead, Sam. I was I was just gonna say like I I just vividly think Carolina was like coming back and love bricked that three, and I was like, well, there's no chance now. It's and it seemed like every time we strung together a few stops against Duke, we couldn't put the ball in the basket for whatever reason. We get three stops in a row, zero points to show for it, and then it would just become a trading bucket thing. Especially yeah, in yeah, exactly. Half. Whenever we did score, Duke had an answer every single possession. No, that was – I mean, what a coach game by Coach K. I have trashed Coach K all, a, a lot in the last few years. That was a beautifully coached game. He couldn't do it on Monday night against – that, was, was, a, that was a clear letdown game for Duke. That was obviously coming. Let me just – real quick on this. He got fouled. The Virginia guy, Beachman, got fouled on that last shot too. They no, he it. didn't. He got he nicked did. on the hand. He did. He, he got, got nicked fouled. on the hand. And it do, doesn't matter. We were a lot. with point seven. Yeah. I don't know. It was it was yeah. over. That back was to the that Carolina was, game. But yeah, back to say. back to the Duke Carolina game. I mean, I I mean, it's hard to say Duke doesn't go two and zero in the series this year. So I just oh, think yeah. Carolina, like, say what you want about Hubert Davis, but I just don't think Carolina is a, a good team. I just don't think they're flat out a good enough team. I was about to say Duke has. It's just hands down Duke has more talent than Carolina does this year. It's not even close. Dawson Garcia just got announced. He's out for the year. So that's another big blow to us. Obviously, you know, personal matters take president over basketball but still huge blow to the team duke just has more talent that's just really what it is and there's no way in hell coach k loses his last game in cameron so it's definitely going to be two oh series to duke i don't know i was thinking about that earlier today i feel like he is going to lose that game I no there's no way he loses there's no way no, I, no way I, I think loses. carolina no wins way. that game i really think duke King is of the ver- reverse there's no here. way there's just no you way. can't out reverse jinx me yeah yeah i just think really duke probably just wins by 40 there's no way coach k does that ever probably um but, yeah, no, I mean, it was a great, great Duke Carolina game. One for the ages. We'll talk about this. I mean, you'll be telling your grandkids about this one. No, oh, you know it. This is one every Carolina fan will forget about in two weeks. Oh, yeah. Once Wait. this season ends, you'll never think about it. Yeah, two years later. Remember when AJ Griffin scored 29? Who? <laughs> the only reason you're going to remember this game is because you were there. Yeah, that'll be the one reason I remember it for sure. You waited all day just to see – Armando Baycott get knocked out of the game in a minute 30. 2,000, yep, I was about to say. We were spot on with that, too. I called that. I said, somebody important is getting 2,000 the first five minutes. Sure enough. I remember you saying that. I watched that one. And, they oh, were, yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. Usually you could, like, argue. It's like, oh, it's a ticky-tack foul. There were two clear fouls. Yeah. He went up against Mark Williams, and then he tried to he tried to cheat with Bancaro. Yeah. Well, that's when I it agree. goes back to Hubert Davis. Why 
why that makes no sense like it no. literally makes no sense like we know nothing and that's just obvious there was no good matchup for brady manic but not putting leaky black on bankero was a mistake also i don't think go i think going zone against duke is actually the thing is you went zone too late i think you start a game zone against duke and then you switch you can't play zone the whole time Duke will get hot and find the middle of the zone but if you start zone because you want to get Brady Manic in there, I don't think that's a bad way to go. I don't either. And if Duke starts killing it, you adjust. But at least at first. And then they they switched his zone after Duke was already feeling themselves. It was like well, it was too late. Already, they were already hitting shots. Duke was already hitting shots. They're already comfortable in the game. Dean Dunn was a wine and cheese club. It actually wasn't a wine and cheese club. I'm not even going to lie. Being in there. It was loud as shit before the tip off. It was loud as shit during the first half. Like the crowd was uh, after waiting. the under after the under twelve timeout. It was a wine and cheese club. I don't know. The crowd was waiting on like something, some Carolina run to happen to get back into it. It just never came. Like you can't you can't blame the crowd. You can't blame the fans. It was just a coaching and the players. I'll say this as a Duke fan, and shout out Alec. We share the same hatred for this. Nothing bothers me more about Carolina fans when they stand up at games. When it, it could be a nothing play. It could just be a defensive rebound, and everybody just stands up and starts clapping. What happens is, like, it's just like a, there's a big stop or a big bucket, and everybody starts standing Lose up and clapping. my mind watching. You're trying to change Lose the momentum. You, know, you do everything you can. Give me a break. Whatever. Give me a break. Cry. 87-67. Who cry. are, you, who are you saying cry to? We won by 20. We're going to win by 20 again in Cameron. We're going to win the national title in New Orleans this year. Carolina might make it farther to Duke in the NCAA tournament. Carol, I mean the NC, and you mean the NIT tournament? No, I mean the NCAA tournament. You mean the NIT because you guys are about to go two and four in the ACC to close out the season. Duke is a classic Jabari Parker year let down in the tournament. Don't give me that. Absolutely not. This team is way better than Jabari Parker. We'll see. Jabari Parker was nasty. I don't want to hear any Jabari Parker slander in this freaking podcast. Never. I would never. Uh, let me move on. Let's see here. Oh, and then Duke just obviously, let me mention this. Duke just with the most obvious letdown against UVA. Of course, we're going against probably the best coach in ACC right now. Right at two days after the Duke Carolina game, we're always losing that game. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty consistent how you can predict their the way their season's gone. It, like, and then, and then obviously we're not going to have back to back losses. We were always tonight. We go out dominate Clemson. Maybe the dirtiest play I've ever seen in college basketball. Jail, jail, J- jail, I mean, jail. I mean, that's a Carolina fan saying jail. Imagine that's a double if, life sentence. Imagine if a Duke player did that to, like, Caleb Love. Oh, I'd, I'd be calling for their head. Ridiculous. But, I mean, yeah, it, it's just obvious with Duke this year. Uh, <laughs> Carolina, lucky win over Clemson. Win's a win. Win's a win. At this the, point, any win one is of a win year? I'll take. Bro, if you're if you're in conference play at this point, they do not care how they get any kind of win. Yeah. If they get it, you move on, you work on it and move on. But you got the work all that matters. I mean, especially in a road game. Duke did the same thing. We won by two against Clemson. Yeah. Clemson's not bad. Yeah, we dominated them tonight. Wake dominated NC State. They're probably gonna win the conference and just steamroll everybody. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, last thing. I was at the BYU Gonzaga game. Pump for it. My first BYU Gonzaga game. How long did you Finally last? Finally there. Um, all right. So you're there. The environment was awesome. And then BYU oh, yeah. goes up 5 0. And you're like, uh oh, we're about to see something here tonight. Immediately, 12 0 run from Gonzaga. I mean, within less than a minute, a 12 0 run from Gonzaga. And it, the building was shot. I mean, shot. The under 16 timeout was like a 12 point lead already. <laughs> And you're sitting there like, all right. And then we watch the rest of the game. BYU slowly going down five, ten more points, 15, 20, 25. I mean, I was at McDonald's by halftime. <laughs> I mean, I went, I, I got so excited for this game. I was at McDonald's by halftime. It was so <laughs> bad. It was 50 to 20. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was, it was destruction. Speaking of which, they're playing right now. I mean, they're blowing their NCAA tournament chances. They're tied to L- a 9-12 and 12 LMU, 2-7 and seven in West Coast Conference play. BYU 17-8, and 5-5 five and five in West Coast Conference play. If they lose this, the dream's over of going to the NCAA tournament. They have to win out to make the NCAA tournament. I, I, mean, and the, I mean, look, their facts are is that BYU's – I mean, it's the same thing as Carolina. They're just yeah. not that good. 
flat out, they're just, they just don't have the talent as other teams I, do. And also, uh-huh. Mark Pope is having a down year as a coach with that as well. Shout out Jay Lenardi for coming on the show. I don't know how we still ask Carolina in the tournament. I have no clue. And he's, he still has BYU as the 68th, 68th ranked team. Carolina will get it over those teams just because their name, if it comes down to it. Because what's Carolina's schedule to close out the season? Oh, God. Um, I think it's a pretty tough stretch coming up, right? Florida State is on Saturday. And then I think it's like Pitt, Notre Dame, maybe. I'm not Here we sure. go. I'm pulling it up right now. I know we play Pitt. I know we play Florida State. FSU at, home, FSU at home is the mm-hmm. biggest game in Carolina season. Yeah. Is FSU at home just going to become Carolina's biggest game of their season every season for now? It happened last year. They finally started letting fans <laughs> in last year for the first time. It up, we upset FSU last year. Pitt will be an easy win. Uh, VT, tricky mm, game. I think you guys yeah. will win just because you're bigger. Maybe. Louisville, they're playing hard right now. Louisville might be a loss. And then I think we play Syracuse after that. That's a win. State. State. I'm a little worried about that. Sam, uh, what do you think about NC State? Bro, if you think I know anything about <laughs> any NC State anything, I don't. They should have been in the College World Series last year, though. The NCAA screwed them over. All right. Now the, that's true. Then you have Syracuse and then Duke. Yeah. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You guys have to go five and two. Yeah, I agree. And probably have to win two games in the AC tournament. Yeah, one or two. At least one. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> all right, well, that's it from us. Make sure to check out the YouTube page, CarterCast. Like, subscribe to all the videos. Check us out on TikTok, at CarterCast. Follow us on Twitter, at Connor underscore Sparrow, at CarterB8. And make sure to follow Sam, at Sam underscore Fatboy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There we go. Perfect. And don't forget, CarterCast.com coming out soon. You can check it out right now. We have podcast ep- episodes put out on there right now we are going to have articles clips everything on there and that will do it from us we will see y'all monday for our super bowl recap show bye